Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. So I will be taking our slider box die set and making it double wide, and then it will become a nice square box that will fit a character made with our mini ball pop-up. And the little lovebird is removable from the slider box. It's attached to a heart, and then if you slide the heart underneath those two strips of paper, that will keep the bird in the box as it pops open, and then it's easily removable for display. So with normal assembly, the slider box will assemble into a box that's four and a quarter long by two and a quarter wide. It's a great little size for filling with candy and treats, but it also is sized perfectly to hold our surprise cube pop-up. So those two die sets were definitely designed to go together, and the surprise cube is popped up using a rubber band. But we also have other rubber band pop-ups, including our popular ball dies. And so by using this technique where we create the slider box twice as wide, now it's going to be big enough to accommodate a character made with our pop-up ball dies. And for this one, I used our mini ball pop-up, which is the smallest of the three. This size slider box will also accommodate the bitty ball, which is the medium one. However, the surprise ball would be too big. I'm going to start with the drawer assembly. And since I'm making a double wide box, I've started with a piece of cardstock eight inches wide by six inches tall. And then I'm going to fold that in half on the six inch side. So essentially I've then got a piece of folded cardstock that measures three by eight. Okay, so now what I want to do is bring the fold line of that heavyweight cardstock up near, but not all the way to that fold line in the die. And the distance I want to be down from that fold line is an eighth of an inch. So what I've done is just cut a piece of scrap cardstock into an eighth of an inch strip. And then I'm going to lay that in the die and then bring the fold line up to it. And then I can slide that down and check on the other side as well that I really am straight, that I'm an eighth of an inch down from the edge and I'm using my temporary removable tape to hold that piece of paper over the die. Now there's no difference in that die on either side, so it wouldn't matter which side you choose to put the fold. You just need to make sure that it's an eighth of an inch down. And then any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die will work with this die. It's gonna be a little hard to roll it through because that's heavyweight cardstock and it's two layers, but the die will cut it. And if it hadn't cut all the way through, I could just roll it back through again to give it some more pressure. But mine cut fine with one pass. Then when I open up that folded piece, I now have a double wide slider drawer. I want a hole right in the center for my ribbon pull, so I can do that with the piece folded and then just take my hole punch and only punch half the circle through the fold. And then when I open it up, it'll be a full circle. I generally use a five inch piece of ribbon for the pull. And before I add that ribbon, I'm going to go around the drawer and just work all of the folds in the piece. I'm just taking a bone folder to them because that is thick cardstock. It's always fine to fold it whichever way it folds the easiest first because those folds can all be reversed later into the side that you want to be, you know, the inside of the drawer and the outside. Okay, so now for adding the ribbon pull, I'm just going to fold the ribbon in half and then take the fold itself and get it through that center hole from inside the drawer. And then I just make a nice loop out of that ribbon, and then with the ends, I just tack those down on the inside of the drawer using a tape runner. Okay, my favorite adhesive for assembling the slider box is my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And what I'm doing here is taking the end that doesn't have the ribbon pull, and putting adhesive all over the inner panel and then over the ends of the outer panel. And then those are going to fold up and over the fold in tabs to create those two corners. So then I'm just going to press that until that glue sets up. So this is normal slider box assembly. We just have this box twice as wide as normal, but even the small one, this would be exactly how you do it. And then the other side of the drawer assembles the exact same way. So the little tabs fold in and they're going to be sandwiched between those two long panels. So I need a little bit of glue on the outside of the outer panel and then all over the inner panel. And I'm just going right over my ribbon ends and everything. Then I just need to create those corners, having that tab fold in, and then the outer panel folds up and over and into the inside of the drawer. And if I don't want to just hold that with my hands, I can always use little quilting clips to just keep it together while the glue sets up. 
this doubled slider box ends up being about a four and a quarter inch square. And so our crosshatch squares die set is absolutely perfect for cutting decorator squares to fit inside that drawer. And I'll also add a square of pattern paper to the underside of the drawer, and that will cover up the seam from where I folded the cardstock to make the double wide drawer. And since the width is the same as the length, then the decorator rectangle that comes included with the slider box die set will fit all of the other sides. The only thing is I need one of them to have a hole in it so that I can slide the ribbon through. And I think it's easiest to slide the piece onto the box first before adding the adhesive to glue it down permanently. I just do that after I've already slid the ribbon through. And then I just continued on adding those decorator rectangles to the outside of the drawer sides and to the inside of the drawer sides. The assembly video for the mini ball pop-up actually goes over how to style a bird using that die set. So I am not going to do that in this video. Rather, I've just gone ahead and assembled and decorated my bird. So all of the pieces for the bird itself came out of that mini ball pop-up, including the hearts that are used for the little garland. That twine goes through the ball and out the other side and attaches the hearts. And then I've also tied twine around the wings as well. And then I mounted that finished bird onto a heart out of our hearts crosshatch die set. Now, so that the bird doesn't just fly right out of the drawer when it's first opened, I'm going to add a strip of pattern paper that's attached just with pop dots on the end. And I'm going to flatten the bird and put it in the drawer to figure out where I need to place that piece of pattern paper so that I can slide the heart that's at the base underneath the paper. And then I'm going to repeat that and do that with another strip for the front edge of the heart. So I just want to make sure that when the bird is inside the drawer, the big heart underneath can be tucked underneath those strips, but there's still a way to rotate it and get it out of there as well. And then I cut another heart out of our hearts crosshatch die set and then added the XOXO out of our word set nine love set. And then I'm going to glue that inside the drawer so that the bird covers it but then when you remove the bird, you can see that little greeting. Okay, back to the slider box die set to make the sleeve now. So the die that cuts the sleeve, normally you would just cut two of them and then you would use the tabs to connect them around to make a sleeve. But in this case, we wanna make it double wide. So I have cut four of them out of a nice heavyweight cardstock. So I'm going to need two of the pieces to make the top of the sleeve and then two to make the bottom of the sleeve. And what I've done is I've taken a piece of cardstock and cut it to the width I want, which is four and a half inches. And then I can just lay those two pieces over the top of that guide that I made out of cardstock, lining up everything. And then I'll know how much overlap I need between those two pieces to glue them together so that the overall width of the sleeve is four and a half inches. So I'm just going to note that with my thumbnail so that I know how much area needs adhesive. And I'm just going to generously coat one half with adhesive and then get the other half over the top. Again, just making sure that I'm lining everything up and then glue the pieces together. And then when I take that piece of cardstock out, now I've got one half of the sleeve. I do have a little overlap right here with this one small tab that really isn't needed. I don't need to glue that to the other tab. I'll just trim it off. Okay, and then I just need to repeat that exact same process to get the other half of the sleeve done. So just putting it over the top of my four and a half inch piece of cardstock, gluing those pieces together, and then trimming off that excess little tab. So now I have two identical halves to the sleeve and I just need to glue those to each other by attaching the larger tab to the tapered tab and the same on the other side. Okay, so with normal slider box assembly, after you get the two halves of the sleeve put together, then on the end that has the fold in tabs, there is a die cut piece that will fit there to complete it. But since I've made it double wide, I need to make that piece with my trimmer. The length of that piece should be four and a half inches. And then on the width, I like to come out to seven eighths of an inch and just come back in a smidge. So it's just a little bit shy of seven eighths of an inch. And that is a nice size piece to fit the end of the slider box attached to those tabs to complete it. 
So glue all over all the fold-in tabs, and then I add my piece of cardstock to it. It can be a little difficult to get good pressure on that, so you can actually either put the drawer in or use something like a bone folder to go in there and give some pressure. I use heavyweight cardstock for the sleeve because the bird includes four rubber bands, and so then that has the potential to bow up that sleeve, as you're seeing here. However, once I start adding the decorations to the sleeve, that will strengthen up quite a bit. So the first way I'm going to strengthen it is when I go around the perimeter with those decorator rectangles, I've decided to actually wrap them around the corners and into the sleeve. So I'm going to start with two glued to each other, and then on the back side of the sleeve, I'm going to add that long strip now and then wrap the ends to the sides. Then I take another rectangle and glue it to the side of the sleeve and then that will have some excess that I can wrap into the sleeve and glue inside. And then the same thing with the other side. So that's going to give some strength to the height of the sleeve by adding those pieces around the corners and wrapped around the edge and into the inside. And then rather than use the square die like I did for the drawer, I'm actually going to take a piece of pattern paper, cut it to four and three eighths of an inch wide, and then go to five and a quarter on the length, and I'm going to do that twice. Okay, so now I'll take one of those pieces of pattern paper and I will generously coat the backside with adhesive, and then that's going to glue to the sleeve so that it covers up all of the overlap and everything from when I constructed it, and it has an overhang that I can wrap to the inside of the sleeve. And I found that was easiest by taking something like an embossing stylus and running it along the edge so that I could easily fold the excess to the inside of the sleeve. And then I just do that process again for the back. And I just found by having that little excess that wrapped to the inside of the sleeve that it definitely made it strong enough. And then you can see it doesn't bow much at all now when I add the drawer inside. Back to my crosshatch hearts die set to layer a couple for the top of the sleeve. And then for a greeting, I'm using our Happy Valentine's Day word. And that one I have cut it twice, once out of pink, once out of black, layered them together with a slight offset to create a drop shadow. And then that is going to glue to the top of my sleeve. Then for the back, I did similar layered hearts, but left the middle one open where I can write my personal greeting and then just added the smallest heart out of the set cut out of the glitter paper to the stack. Okay, and my sleeve is finished. My drawer was already finished. I did add a little decorative heart on the inside as well. And then when I want to go ahead and give that to somebody, I just flatten the bird, slide the drawer inside the sleeve. You can see how that is. And then when they open it, the bird will pop up but you have the option to just kind of twist it until you can get the bird removed and then it can be displayed. So just with regular assembly of the slider box, you can fill that with surprise cubes. And then if you try this double wide assembly, then you have the option to add a bitty ball or mini ball character inside. With designer challenge videos, I love to focus on techniques, just ways to stretch your die sets and get more use out of them. If you need even more inspiration for this month's theme, which is Valentine's Day, or they can do wedding or anniversary, head on over to the blog post. You'll find the link in the description box below. You will find photographs and supply links for my card, as well as links to all of that great inspiration by our talented design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can purchase these dies, as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.